Hi everybody, this is Burke Lyle and it is February uh, 7th, it is a Friday and I'm recording a little bit before noon on this day and just last night uh, what I was watching is I got to watch the Houston Rockets kind of for the first time and this is a nationally televised game against the Lakers kind of play that small lineup and it was interesting for most of the game PJ Tucker was their center where before he was kind of a small forward kind of a wing perimeter or at times even a power forward you know things in today's day and age you know the NBA keeps getting smaller and smaller we're starting to see less and less of true centers and especially Power forwards used to be almost as big as centers. Now they're basically wings. I mean, LeBron can play power forward pretty easily. So can Paul George. So can, you know, the list just goes on and on. I bet James Harden could. Such is the way today's NBA is heading. And just watching the game. And by the way, the Rockets won it. There's like 120 to 111, something like that. So they pulled away, and I watched the entire game, so yes, I did stay up till 1 a.m. to see it, but just seeing the lineups with these things I noticed. Anthony Davis is guarding Russell Westbrook. That happened in the first quarter. That happened really throughout the game. Since the reason why the Rockets really didn't have a true big man, I mean, the Lakers pretty much used anybody to guard them, and players guarding Anthony Davis, I mean, it was P.J. Tucker at times. I believe it was Robert Covington at times. So the biggest question is, and you clearly thought that in the first quarter, I saw the stats, the Lakers had 11 rebounds, the Rockets had 7, and the Lakers scored 20 points in the paint, and it appeared that, oh, here's the deal, that the Rockets are going to get burned in the paint, and that appeared to be the case early on. And what they have to do, and is I think they have to shoot threes since again at halftime I saw they were 10 for 18 from the three-point line I, and I watched the game and the Rockets have been like this for years they shoot a ton of three-pointers they shoot just as many threes as just about anybody in the entire NBA so when they shoot threes if it goes in that's great they could score 100 and 20 130 140 year high right they can be almost as close to 200 as are to 100 in terms of points. But if they're not, if they don't hit threes, and I'm sure I'll see some games that are like that, are they going to win, especially in the playoffs? I mean, what's going to happen? So, kind of things I listed, like those points in the paint and rebounds, I was kind of from the first quarter, I think, who really took over, and I thought the player of the game for sure, is Russell Westbrook who watching him play this year and really watching him recently he used to take a lot of three-pointers and he's one of the worst three-point shooters in the NBA percentage-wise he is always right around 30 percent usually lower which is a really bad three-point percentage and this year and especially recently has cut back on the three-pointers and seeing him play just kind of I had 15 points at halftime, so I was like, okay, that's nice. And then took over in the third quarter at 16 points in that quarter at 31. And from what I watched him score last night, I took note of it was basically shooting mid-range jump shots, which in today's day and age is, you know, you mostly see in the most efficient way to score, either do it in the paint or shoot threes, which is what the Rockets did for years. They harden, would chuck up a bunch of threes or whatever, or drive so on and so forth or they throw a bunch of lobs to Clint Capella or whatever and also Russ was driving I mean look as still even at 31 he in his 12th year in the league is still very athletic still very explosive so he's scoring really all over the floor and at the end of the day he had 41 points so again scored in the fourth quarter so he took was 17 of 28 from the field very efficient and in all in all took just two threes and he I think he had one so yeah he, sure what I just said he cut back on the threes is now focused on mid-range jump shots which I've seen over the years he's very effective from mid-range and is very effective going inside getting to the line 
you know, his free throw shooting is better this year. It's right around his career average, right around 80%. As opposed to being kind of in the 70s, lower 70s than last year for some reason. I think it was in the mid-60s, very bizarre. But it seems like Russ has found his free throw stroke back. I think on the year is averaging 25 points a game. Yes, his triple-double streak is going to end, but at times recently, like Harden, uh, earlier this year, we're thinking, wow, James Harden, I mean, obviously he's the best scoring stretch that somebody's won on really since Kobe Bryant, the late Kobe Bryant, kind of the mid-2000s. Well, we thought, oh, Harden's going to average 40 a game. That is not the case anymore. I just scored 40 a couple nights ago against the Hornets, but... James Harden didn't have it that night. It was Russell Westbrook that took over, right? It was Russell Westbrook that took over in that game, took over in the third quarter and the fourth quarter. It was truly his game since, again, took 28 shots. The next highest was uh, 10 from Eric Gordon. He had a really good game. He had a lot of threes. I think he was five for eight from the three-point line. And then James Harden took only 10 shot attempts. James Harden just didn't have it. And down the stretch recently, this has been Russell Westbrook's team. Not James Harden. He's early on in the years, there's trends, oh, we're going to watch Harden score 40 or 50 a night or whatever. Now this is Russell Westbrook scoring about 30 a night in recent stretches. And look, this is just one Rockets game, since I'm going to be honest. When it comes to the NBA, and I'm going to talk about this right now for a minute, I don't talk about the NBA very much. I mean, you've seen my YouTube videos. I've talked a lot about what is going on in the NFL this week, each and every week. And I talked a lot of Major League Baseball back in October. And I will continue to talk a lot more Major League Baseball in the coming weeks and months. But I just, you know, right now it's kind of February. It's kind of post-Super Bowl. It's kind of a slow period in the sports cycle. There's no really huge headlines to talk about. So... I just wanted to kind of talk about the Rockets and kind of say what was going on with them. So again, it was Russell Westbrook last night. And I think last night is somewhat of a trend for the Rockets. So, other things I noticed. Tavo Sepalosha was guarding Anthony Davis. Again, Tavo Sepalosha was a wing defender. Right? That is more of his role what I've seen over the years. So again, you don't have a true center. And this is, I just read The Athletic, Kelly Eco from The Athletic, I read a, a few of his stories over the past couple of days to find out more about the Rockets. So, Robert Covington is kind of interesting, so he's kind of the big big story right now in the NBA. Since so again, they traded uh, Clint Capella. Since I think he's hurt anyways, I think he's battling foot issues. And Robert Covington basically read, reading the story, kind of what it was going through him on the trade deadline, basically... It's kind of this, and this is paraphrasing. I think came in on little sleep. I think caught a 6 a.m. flight, I think, from Minnesota or wherever they were to Houston, and then caught another, I think they said, red eye flight to L.A., crashed in the hotel for a few hours, and then basically watched film and basically had to learn their whole system within a span of a few hours. So now you bring Robert Covington, who... His role is to play perimeter defense, so I saw him guarding LeBron some last night. Will he guard like a LeBron James or a Kawhi Leonard or Paul George in the playoffs or even someone like a Donovan Mitchell? I think could do either one. This is a kind of a shooting guard slash small forward, kind of 6'5", 6'6", six, six, six. will shoot threes and hit threes. I saw him shoot threes last night. So again, if, if they're lucky, could get very good defense out of him and potential extra scoring by hitting three-pointers. So that's the Rockets' role for the rest of the year. And when they trade Clint, Patel, Clint Capella, uh, the reason is that I don't think they see the fit his play anymore. Like reading about the Rockets, I think, and, and I kind of had a thought about this right before I came on. I think, again, in previous years, I think Chris Paul or James Harden or whoever threw lobs to Capella and they gave it to Capella into the post, you know, was there for paint, defense, perimeter defense. So a good, solid center. They gave him money. I think it was five years, $90 million, And it was a key part of that team that won 65 games uh, two years ago, but ultimately lost to the Warriors in Game 7 of the conference finals. So they end up losing to the Warriors. 
in that in that seven game series and last year the Warriors beat them again. So obviously the Rockets are a title contender who at times have looked like title contenders, but just can't quite figure it out. I think in the last five years they've lost twice in the conference finals, twice in the conference semifinals, and hard fought series, two teams, the Spurs and now the Rock. And and then the Warriors again last year, so the Warriors have beaten them three times the last five years. And then you bring in Russell Westbrook. So, again, last night was one game. It was one game. It wasn't, and you can't judge off one game, especially in the NBA, this is an 82-game season. Where, you know, from what I saw last night, and there's certain things you're going to see. Number one, Russell Westbrook's not going to score 40 every night, and James Harden's not going to, not having and struggle to score 10 points. That's not going to happen every night. Most nights, I think Harden's going to score 30, 35, and Russell Westbrook's going to score between, have a good, you know, 25-point game, get assists, whatever. Score two, you know, they'll basically, they'll, I mean, pretty much all the time from watching the game is one of them's going to be on the floor, one of them's going to get rested, and they're going to play a lot together. Which, I, I had a few thoughts of this at first. I didn't think it would work. I mean, it's early. It's not like they're going to... It's not like they're one of the very best teams in the NBA. They're not championship favorites. Now, can they get hot and find a way to make it to the finals? Sure they can. But some things we saw last night are not a norm. But other things that we might have seen. Like, for an example, the lineups they used. And for the rest of the season, they're going to play small for the rest of the season. That's what I think. They will not have a true center since after they traded Clint Capella, it turned out that they did not go out and get, like I say, a true center that's, say, 6'10", 7' foot or whatever, who's going to play in the paint, block shots. So again, they're probably not going to block too many shots down the stretch if any, since who's going to who's gonna be your center? Is it going to be P.J. Tucker? You could say Robert Covington at times. Tabla Cephalosha. I mean, he was guarding A.D. last night. Uh, maybe James Harden. I mean, you want to look at the lineup, sure. You can say, oh, P.J. Tucker's technically the center. But you really don't have a center. Or really any big man at all. I mean, the tallest player on the court, what, is going to be like 6'7"? So last night it worked. And they beat the Lakers. Now the question is... Again, this is small sample size. We took one thing we saw last night on a regular season game in February 6th, right after the Super Bowl, basically a mid-season game. And can you say, if this was a playoff series, this would happen every time. So could the Rockets beat the Lakers in the playoffs? Well, they did it last night, sure. Sure, but if I had to guess, if they played each other in the playoffs, I think it would be a very good you know, like second-round playoffs I think it would be a very good six-game series where the Rockets could look like they could beat them at times, but in the day, it's the Lakers. That's what I would think would happen if they played in the playoff series. It would be six games. And I think the Rockets right now, I think they're I think they're anywhere from a mid-level team, four or five, to possibly as high as maybe three, and maybe they can go to the conference finals. But if they met in the second round, look, it would be a series worth watching for sure. Like it would be a fun series to watch. Now, could the Rockets win it all? Probably not. Again, players like Westbrook and Harden for many years. I mean, they go all the way back to the 2012 Thunder playing LeBron James's Heat in the finals. They have each been chasing championships basically ever since then. And neither one of them, since obviously we know what happened to Kevin Durant, has become really particular, has not been back to the finals since then. They've each lost in the conference finals multiple times, including two Warriors teams, Westbrook and Durant in 2016. And two years later, the Rockets in a series where maybe they should have won, or certainly could have won, especially the Thunder having a 3-1 lead. So you have, so you have stories like that, right? So now the question is, how how is this going to play out the rest of the year? Since there's going to be nights or whatever, and, I'm, and and the Rockets are going to be on national TV a lot down the stretch, 
So it'll be interesting to see what happens other nights, right? Since how does this work? Do they get hot and somehow get the two seed or the three seed? Or do they kind of stay steady, get a five seed, and then, eh, can they beat the Jazz? Since you think about uh, the Western Conference and trying to think um, teams that would have centers. I mean, you think about the Lakers, right? In the NBA, hold on. Sorry, I just wanted to pull up the list of Western Conference teams. Um. Okay, so you have the teams like the Lakers, obviously having somebody like uh, Anthony Davis. We saw that last night. Davis at times really put pressure on wings guarding Anthony Davis. All right. So can you win a playoff series if it's P.J. Tucker or Tabo Cephalosha or whoever Robert Covington? Is that task of guarding Anthony Davis? I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work. And this is something kind of radical. Like, we, you go you use baseball. And you talk about, oh, bull, when, using the bullpen, right? And again, they're two different sports. But you think, oh, can radical teams like the Brewers win the World Series? Or whatever. Or teams that are bullpen first that are completely bullpen dependent, right? I mean, I've talked a lot about that the last two Octobers. Or do you really need starting pitching? Well, the Nationals won the World Series with starting pitching, and the Astros almost won the World Series with really good starting pitching, too. So there's that factor, right? But now when it comes to basketball, like, do you need like somebody who can just grab a rebound to win a championship? I mean, if you think about it, the Warriors, I mean, sure, they had a center. They had JaVale McGee. They had Zaza Pachulia, Andrew Bogut, but they never really had like a true, they never really had an all-star level center. They had Boogie Cousins who was in and out of the lineup for much of the year last year. But there's that factor, right? So yes, they did have a center. No one was ever like the Rockets. Uh, or, I mean, the Rockets for years always had a center, that, right? The Cavs had Tristan Thompson when they won their finals, right? So really pretty much every team. Think about the Lakers, Dynasty, Jack, Tim Duncan. So you go on and on. Yes, there have been valuable big men on finals championship teams, but never before can I ever recall a team this short that really doesn't have any type of big man whatsoever. Right? I mean, the Raptors had Mark Gasol as their center and Pascal Siakam. Not really a center, more of a big man power forward and then so so you see the list right of recent championship teams they always had somebody right every championship team has center that you think of recently this Rockets team is doing something completely radical where they, they don't even have that as an option since the Warriors at times sure I guess Kevin Durant could have been their so called center at times or Andre Iguodala or whatever, but never like this where you're going to go small ball all the time and not have anybody be, never have a big man in the court. I mean, Tyson Chandler might play occasionally, but based on seeing last night, he's not really a rotation member that much of the time. So that's the point. So the Lakers have JaVale McGee and Anthony Davis at all times. The Clippers, they don't have a true center that I can think of. And then, it's better than the Rockets, Nuggets, Jokic, obviously, Jazz, Gobert, Thunder, Steven Adams, right? The Mavericks have Chris Jasporzingis, who's seven foot three, not exactly the best, say, big best big man rebounding fundamentals you, you'll ever see, right? There's all those teams. So the Rockets right now would have to play the Jazz. Instantly have Rudy Gobert. How does that work, right? Let's just say this everything ends today, right? And there are two and a half games behind the Thunder. Or, or pardon me, the Nuggets. And three games behind the Clippers for second place. 5.5 behind the, the uh, Lakers. So, obviously as of right now, they could slip into the 5 spot pretty easily. Or even in the 6 spot if the Thunder keep 
stay mod. So again, pretty much right away, they will see a center, and that and last night was just one game. That was one game that I saw against like a true like team against someone like Anthony Davis. So the question is, we need to give this more time. How does this work out? And does it work? And the biggest question is, come playoff time, how does this work in the playoffs? Since I think what the Rockets are trying to do is they're trying to try something to do, something radical that has never been done before. And if it works, what if they make it to the conference finals? What if what happened last night, and they can beat the Lakers four times in seven games, not once, like they did last night? What if they do go to the NBA Finals? So best case scenario, it works great, and teams say, and it becomes a copycat league. Or this is just an experiment. I don't think it works. Maybe next year they sign like a true center, and they have a true center from now on, a true big man. I mean, you think about all the teams around the league, right? So it's just kind of interesting thing I wanted to talk about. You know, a good story to talk about from kind of what from what I saw last night. And I'm going to watch the Rockets again some more down the stretch and see what it's like. But I think this is very fascinating. So again, thank you for listening. And we'll see you next time again. Uh, this video, I didn't even think about making it until last night. I think everything will be kind of a day-by-day -day thing. You know, so I'll just kind of make videos when I see stories break. And I look forward to making, obviously, another video here on YouTube. So thank you, everybody, uh, for watching, and we will see you next time.